take Paul Minor David, who just spoke with passion and conviction. I want to thank all of the Kentucky coal miners here today. And I want to thank every single man and woman who's a coal miner in this crowd today. And across this country, because you built an industry that powers America. Now in Washington, people have a way of talking in numbers that boggle the mind. And we can talk about the billions of dollars that the EPA's recently announced new source performance standards will cost our economy. We can talk about the impact of gigawatts of coal-fired power that will be lost on our manufacturing sector, increase the unemployment rate, or any other number of economic factors. We can talk about the 40% decline in employment in eastern Kentucky coal production. But all of those numbers are so large and so separated from people's actual lives that they can be an abstraction. The figure that really matters is the number of innocent people caught up in the Obama administration's war on coal. More than 6,200 of my fellow Kentuckians have lost their jobs in the mines over the last two years due to an unprecedented regulatory assault on the coal industry. That's right. That 6,200 proud people who have been forced into the unemployment lines because of President Obama. Yeah. That's right. Some of these Kentuckians come from families where generations have made a living in the mines. And that way of life is in danger of being lost forever. The impact on these miners' families and communities dependent on salaries only coal can, can provide has been devastating. Small businesses have no customers. County governments have no tax revenues to invest in schools or infrastructure. The unemployment in some counties is in double digits, including in my district in central and eastern Kentucky. The outcomes are the result of an artificial crisis, an economic downturn engineered in the West Wing and enforced by the EPA. Unelected, unaccountable Washington bureaucrats have decreed that this way of life, the symbol of Appalachia, must now come to an end, regardless of the consequences on the lives of their fellow Americans. And the worst part, Kentucky and her neighbors in Appalachia will not be alone. When the EPA's regulations are implemented, the rest of the country will share in their pain. Jobs far from the coal fields in hundreds of thousands will be lost as the coal of electricity goes through the roof. These are jobs in factories. These are jobs on farms. These are jobs in transportation. These are jobs in health care. And they will be gone because of the war on coal. The middle class will be squeezed by these forces as our diminished economic competitiveness puts the American dream out of reach. And the results of these ruinous policies will be clear. Now, we in the House continue to seek to roll back the EPA's policies. However, we will need support in the White House. We will need support in the Senate. And these people are seemingly unaware or unconcerned of the plight in our mining communities. So I have a message. I have a message for President Obama. Come to Eastern Kentucky. Visit Appalachia's coal fields. Speak with these coal miners and their families who have been issued pink slips because of your environmentalist agenda. And then ask yourself, look yourself in the mirror, Mr. President. Is this the kind of hardship I want to inflict on the American people? I want to conclude by telling a story about the human dimension of this war on coal. In the eastern part of my district, there's a county called Wolf County. Wolf County, Kentucky. Who's from Wolf County? All right. Canton, Kentucky. In Canton, Kentucky, I did a town hall meeting in August right before kids were going back to school. And a young woman by the name of Sally came up to me at the end of that town hall meeting with tears welling up in her eyes. 
and she said, Congressman, my husband lost his job. He's a coal miner. But his employer can't get a permit because of Barack Obama's war on coal. And the problem is my kids are going back to school. And they're growing up. And they've grown out of their shoes. And I can't afford to buy them shoes. So I bought them flip-flops so that they wouldn't be embarrassed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. It is fundamentally wrong. It is fundamentally immoral. It is downright outrageous that the federal government would put the American hard-working family in economic distress. And that's why we're going to fight back with everything we have. God bless each and every one of you.